violence testifying to a competitive zeal, as well as an undeniable attraction created only by bodies of a particular mass. Today, the grace, the power, the inner strength come together. From Hollywood Park Casino, it's the North American Sumo Wrestling Championships. Hi everybody, I'm Tony Revis. Welcome to Inglewood, California for the North American Sumo Wrestling Championships. Obviously, sumo wrestling is a sport of giants. And yet, as they try to make their way onto the Olympic program in the next millennium, sumo has included a lightweight division and a middleweight division as well. In fact, just last year, Bill Thompson of Canada, the middleweight champion, defeated Siani Pelotu, the heavyweight king, in the Open Division Championship. And yet, this year, Thompson did not even qualify for the Canadian team. Now, joining me again this year is John Jacks, longtime sumo coach and former competitor. John, we begin with the lightweights. That's under 187 pounds. And in the semifinals, a couple of familiar faces. Yeah, we've got uh, Andy Ruggiero, champion last year. Jason Neer, the runner-up. Both these guys have judo backgrounds, as most of the athletes do. They participate in other sports besides sumo. In our first semifinal, Jason Neer on the left from Canada. Nick Yonazuka out of New Jersey. And both these men have won two bouts to get into the semifinals. Nikki Yonizuka is a former member of the U.S. National and Olympic Judo team. His first year in sumo. Expect a lot out of him. Jason Neer, the background in sumo. Good start. Both wrestlers kind of not charging, waiting to get a judo grip. And most lightweight division fighters go with the belts more than the sheer power. We start with a stalemate here, John. Yeah, again, this goes back to their judo background. They're waiting for somebody to lean and pull so they can go pull their judo throws. They're looking to counter more than initiate the pressure? Absolutely. The big guys will do a lot more pushing. These guys wait to, to kind of throw. Now, this is one of six continental tournaments leading to the World Championship later in the year in Japan. So a win here gets into the finals. All the finalist champions move on. And here's a, here's a throw, and it's Yonazuka. Getting the best of Jason Neer, and that was really quite a tactical match. Yeah, that was a great throw. Uh, Yonizuka waited for the push, and with the overarm throw, Watanagi took Jason to the mat. And he moves on to the finals. Now, in our second semifinal, Andy Ruggiero from New Jersey squares up against Victor Jean Baptiste from Haiti, also a semifinalist last year. Andy, last year, off of his victory, qualified and went to the World Championship in Tokyo, and his sumo has really come along. He got to train the professional stable for a few days. You know, John, it's an example of how the growth in sumo is going beyond just uh, Japan into the United States as well, and people with different backgrounds, again, both these men with judo backgrounds, are starting to develop more sumo technique as they get more heavily into the sport, and the opportunities are out there for them. Absolutely. You can see Andy here is keeping his feet nice and wide apart, uh, toes pointing out, which is perfect sumo form, so he's not able to be thrown so easily. And very much like our first semifinal, these men are trying to feel the pressure points of the other man, and there Baptiste attempts a throw countered by Ruggiero. Again, Ruggiero's leg work is what's keeping him in this match. Ruggiero with a skuinagi underarm throw without a grip on the belt wins that match. There are 70 officially recognized winning techniques in sumo, each with its own name. And so Ruggiero moves on to the finals for the second straight year and goes up against, of all people, his training partner, Nick Yonazuka. Both these guys out of Newark, New Jersey, train together in the same judo dojo and uh, bring a wealth of judo experience into this. And a wealth of knowledge about the opponent as well. This ought to be interesting. Within two pounds of one another's weight, exactly the same age and experience. Notice Andy starts kind of with a sprinter's start, which is a little bit unique to sumo. Oh, and a very quick match there. And it looks like the official is pointing to Ruggiero. Andy was able to get a nice overarm grip called Watanage throw. Yonizuka's hand touched the ground. You know, there was a, the semifinal matches were both very long and involved. How much strength does it take out in the prelims leading toward the final? It takes a lot out of you. You know, it's... Uh... It doesn't look like we're doing much, but it's using all your muscles. The buff middleweight, 188 to 253 pounds. Up next, stick with us.
field, I can smell fear a mile away. And here I smell fear too. And it stinks. But I ain't it. I'm afraid to try Zest body wash. <laughs> Listen, smelly boy. Zest gets you cleaner and more refreshed. But I ain't it. I need some serious lather. <laughs> Look here, it takes nine bars to get as much cleaner rinsing lather as Zest Body Wash with Lather Thingy. Get cleaner, more refreshed with Zest Body Wash. Now that's Zest really clean. Have a bagel, dear. There's a hole in it, Marion. Hey, guys. Sweetheart, why is Scooter in our window? Big news. 1010321 is better than ever. <laughs> it's always been great. But now 1010321 saves 50% on calls over 10 minutes. See, Tom, you don't know everything. 50% off 10 minutes every day? Every day, 24-7. What about calls to Canada? International calls over 10 minutes are half off, too. That's great, dear. Come in out of the cold. Now he is. <laughs> Gotta tell the Petersons. Who doesn't want to save 50%? Welcome back to the North American Sumo Wrestling Championships. Tony Revis along with John Jacks at the Hollywood Park Casino. One of the most compelling stories we told last year was the father-son middleweights, Roger and Kenna Heffernan of Hawaii. This year, Roger's brought along reinforcements. 22-year-old son, Jacob. Sumo has always been with the Heffernan family. Roger was a state champion freestyle wrestler. When he got into sumo, he brought his two boys along with him. And now his youngest son, even Michael, at the age of five, is starting to get involved with sumo. Well, last year, Roger and Kenna were paired up against one another in the middleweight quarterfinals. And while Kenna didn't enjoy fighting his father and then lost in the finals, the trip was one of the most rewarding this Yale grad ever took. You know, it was fun. You know, initially, you know, something that we weren't really looking forward to. And then uh, after a while, it was something that became a yearly thing, that it was like a family union for all three of us that brought us all three closer together. Now we go into the middleweight competition here at the Hollywood Park Casino, and it is Jacob Heffernan on the left against Heath Johnson on the right. And Heath has been living for the last six years in Chiba, Japan. Yeah, Heath has been a member of the U.S. national team for three years because he's lived in Japan. Uh, we didn't have to fly him in, and his sumo has really progressed. He trains with the amateurs in college and also with professional. Boy, that went very fast. Jacob's hand went down, but it looked like Heath Johnson's foot went out. Let's see what the officials say. Uh, that's a real call. Heath jumped aside what they call Hataki Komi, and right as his foot stepped out of bounds, Jake's hand hit the ground, so we'll see what the referees, the judges decide. Let's look at it one more time and see if we can find a closer look and which one of them. The whole idea is to get the man to go out of the ring first or touch down first, and that looked like pretty much a tie. That was a tie, so they're going to have a refight. It's called Tori no Oshi. One more time. Oh, my, a, a tremendous headbutt. Jacob nailed Heath Johnson, but Johnson maintained his focus and won the match. Now, with his training, Johnson was able to stay low to the ground, and, and that's what won him the match, his body position. Lucky he didn't leave blood on the mat. And that brings us to the semifinalists, and Kenna Heffernan has made it this far. Ron Angus from Canada. Johnson and Harvey Wong, another friend of yours from Hawaii. Yeah, Harvey was a great football player, and he's been involved with sumo for two years. Did real great last year in the national championship. First time in international competition versus the Canadian Angus. Harvey's known for a big hit at the start, so I'd say watch, watch for Harvey to blast from firing out of the blocks. He was a good lineman. He used to fire out real good, and he uses that to his advantage. He's also got the look. Yeah, it looks like he's almost got that official chomagi that the professional wrestlers wear, but it's just a stylish haircut. Boy, he, can, he did indeed come firing out. Angus gets taken to the mat, but Angus, well, look at disappointment. Wong just dominated him. Yeah, it looked like Angus wasn't quite ready, and uh, again, Wong with his big hit just took him right out of the mat. There wasn't even a chance for Angus to save himself at the edge there. And now the second semifinal a match I'm looking forward to quite a bit. Heath Johnson against Kenna Heffernan. Johnson right at the 253-pound limit. His family is in the stands right behind where Kenna is lining up and squatting. This should be probably the, the premier match of the lightweight, middleweight division. Uh, Johnson and Heffernan, I think, were odds-on favorites to, to take this coming in. Well, you can see that Johnson's really pumping himself up. Here we go. Uh, both wrestlers are kind of cautious there. It was a slow start. And with Oshidashi, a nice hand thrust. Uh, Johnson, the winner. And Heath is married to a Japanese woman. And as you said, has been training with both amateurs and professionals in Japan. We asked him about how he's been received over there. Um, everybody's been very respectful to me. And I guess I'm 
maybe a little bit unusual, a little bit rare to be competing in Japan, and so I think people like that. You're the best damn redhead in Japan. <laughs> I hope so. Well, that brings us to our middleweight championship bout. Johnson on the right, Wong on the left. And, John, do you think that Heath Johnson beating Kenna Heffernan makes him the favorite? Oh, absolutely. I know Harvey's going to fire out here. He's going to come 100 miles an hour, and Heath's seen him already, so I wouldn't be surprised if Heath anticipating that. So this should be an exciting match right here, but I, I, I'd go with Heath right now. Big squat down, Shikiri position. One hand down, then the second, and then the match begins. And there's the fire out by Wong, handled well by Johnson at the beginning. And Wong fought back in and just slipped at the edge right there. In traditional sumo, the ring or doyo is the same size, 15 feet diameter, but it's made of dirt. This canvas is more slippery. Yeah, and since the wrestlers are not allowed to put anything on their feet to help them stick a little bit more, it takes a lot of getting used to. Tell me about that final competition. Uh, the last bout. Uh, I felt confident going on the belt with uh, Mr. Wong because usually the Hawaiian wrestlers try and use more power, and I feel my real strength is in my legs and my thighs. Whereas real sumo, they try and use their, their legs and their thighs a little bit more. So that's what I wanted to try and do when I went into that bout. Well, we have crowned a light and middleweight champion so far. Sumo do's and don'ts when we return. Imagine a place that's pure entertainment. Total Choice Platinum for only $18 more per month with your Total Choice subscription. You'll enjoy 13 additional channels of incredible movie entertainment with the Independent Film Channel, four channels of stars, and eight channels of encore. You'll also get more than 25 specialty sports networks, including Speed Vision, The Golf Channel, ESPN Classic Sports, and Fox Sports Net. Call 1-800-547-4DTV for Total Choice Platinum from DirecTV. DirecTV is proud to unveil C, the magazine for satellite TV. Call 1-800-496-8273 and have your DirecTV account number ready. Our new annual subscription offer saves you 20% off the regular monthly price, only $37.90 for one full year. Conveniently billed to your DirecTV statement. New subscribers get their first month free. Call 1-800-496-8273. Look and see. C from DirecTV, your insight into the world of entertainment. This Sunday night, the Denver Broncos against the San Diego Chargers. It's an ESPN Sunday night football war. What's Bronco? You know, it's a Bronco that uh, gets the migraines. He doesn't get them anymore because he drinks orange juice. He drinks orange juice. It's it has nothing to do with orange juice. It has everything to do with orange juice. ESPN Sunday night football. The Broncos against the Chargers. Have any of you guys ever tried to know Julius? Because they're really delicious. Welcome back to the Hollywood Park Casino in Inglewood, California for the North American Sumo Wrestling Championships. We are fortunate indeed to have on hand at the North American Championships from the Amori Prefecture on the island of Honshu, the reigning national sumo team champions from Japan. They are here to demonstrate some of the sumo do's and don'ts at the Hollywood Park Casino. Here Mr. Narita demonstrates you do want to maintain a low center of gravity in the ring. However, do not maintain a low video poker hand in the casino. Here, Mr. Kudo demonstrates a slapping attack called Spotty. However, it's no fair to bewilder your opponent with these attacks called Molary Curly. Now, Mr. Osanai shows the proper form when you attempt the most common pushing technique called Oshidashi. However, there is no correct form, and we urge you not to undertake the least common pulling technique called Omagashno. Oh Just a few of the basic do's and don'ts in sumo to help you better appreciate the sport. Now back to the action. We are into the finals of the heavyweight division, and we have Sioni Polotu and Wayne Vieira. Polotu on the left. Polotu and Vieira have trained together for the past three years in sumo. They're very best buddies, graduates of the same high school, both state wrestling champions in freestyle wrestling in high school and now meeting for the North American Sumo Heavyweight Championship. Last year, Sione was the runner-up in both the heavyweight and open divisions. I, I cannot joke about it, but um, my favorite color is like silver because <laughs> I have tons of, of second place um, uh, trophies. And, and I mean, other than the team, of course, um, I have tons of second place because I've constantly had guys who are uh, more experienced than I. If there's a nicer man in any sport, I'd like to meet him. 
and the experience comes with Vieira. He spent two years in professional sumo in Japan, so he's definitely got the technique. There was an overarm throw again to Watanagi, dropping close to 450 pounds on the mat. Sione came into the competition with a plantar fascia problem on his left foot and hard to push off, and you could see that. He just sort of caved in at the end. No pressure on that left foot possible. Yeah, unfortunately, he had that leg injury. But again, Sione takes his favorite color, silver. Uh, Vieira having a fantastic year. He won the Hawaii State Championship, won the United States National Championship in Tokyo. He took third place in the world, and now he has the North American Championship to his list this year. Fantastic. I was trying to be aggressive, but Sione came off a lot quicker than I did, and I was surprised actually at his uh, speed off of the starting. Um, so I had to really uh, come back at the end to win by a hair. I, I just barely put a hat trick on him. Uh, to win this match, but it's the only one off the start. The one piece of equipment in sumo is the mawashi, or belt. In amateur sumo, the mawashi is made of canvas. Here, Manny Yarbrough, along with lightweight Andrew Freund, compare their respective mawashis. This is the mawashi that I won the 1995 World Championship in. And I still hold an emotional attachment. We've been together going on three years. Wow. How long have you had this? Well, I've just been doing this for like about three months. So I've only used this maybe six or seven times. So you haven't developed the love and the emotion and, and the feelings for it. I don't have quite as much dirt on it yet. Well, that, that comes from practice and, and scraping in the whole nine. Uh -huh. But you have to develop an emotional attachment to this. This is your lifeblood. This uh -huh. is the way of the warrior. Cherish it, love it, respect it. We will have Manny fighting up next if we can find him. If you're not playing next week, how about if you come back and make believes? Man, there's got to be a better way. Now when you drink Sprite, look under the cap and you could win $25,000 in the Sprite salary cap game. A little help to get you through those tough times. On the football field, I can smell fear a mile away. And here I smell fear too. And it stinks. But I ain't it. I'm afraid to try Zest Body Wash. Ah! Listen, smelly boy. Zest gets you cleaner and more refreshed. But I ain't it. I need some serious lather. Ugh! Look here. It takes nine bars to get as much cleaner rinsing lather as Zest Body Wash with lather thingy. Get cleaner, more refreshed with Zest Body Wash. Now that's zestfully clean. Wow, buck seventy-five for a cup of joe? It's the 90s. Everything's out of whack. Not so fast. I know how you can get all your long-distance calls for under a buck. Oh, I heard about that. You dial 10, 10, 2, 20, and all your long-distance calls from home up to 20 minutes cost just 99 cents. Now, there's an informed consumer. What happens after 20 minutes? It's only 10 cents for each extra minute. Well, you got to sign a contract. You've been hurt, haven't you? There is no contract. Not up. Yeah, you just dial 10, 10, 2, 20, 1, and then the number. Bingo. A little sanity in an otherwise insane world. Coffee's up. Yeah, you know, every once in a while it all just comes together and you do have that perfect show. Bob Lee had one back in 89, Steiner had his in 91, Dan had one working last season. It got crazy out there. During the commercial breaks, the crew, they wouldn't talk to him. Kenny wouldn't even look at him. It was intense. And that, of course, is the sort of thing that can't never happen in a playoff race. What did he just say? That's a double negative. At the end, he just let it get away from him. Welcome back to the Hollywood Park Casino in Inglewood, California for the North American Sumo Wrestling Championships. I'm Tony Revis along with my partner John Jacks and we move to the open division where the big man Manny Yarborough begins his competition. Manny was the world champion in 1995. Last year he took second place again so he's definitely one of the top in the world and definitely America's top sumo wrestler right now. I just don't, I don't think they realize the uh the camaraderie and, and the sportsmanship, I mean, I think they just see two big guys bumping bellies, but I don't think they really get to see the skill or or even the drama. I mean, each match that, that you see, I've said it over and over, it's not the size of the man in the fight, but the size of the fight in the man, and this is the epitome of, of that. Well, his opponent, Yukio Kudo from Japan, 235 pounds, you better have a lot of fight in him. Well, he does, he's a school teacher, but he's also top eight in nationals last year in Japan. He's staying low under Manny, trying to get a grip and drive him. The only way he can beat Manny is to get lower, and you can see Kudo is definitely lower than Manny. Plus, he's about outweighed by about 300 pounds. 
But now the official has stopped the match. He's seen something. What's he seen? Yeah, many with an overarm grip again just lifted Kudo and placed him outside the ring. His foot touched outside the ring. Any part of your body hits outside the ring, the match is over. Let's take a look at it. Watch the left foot, the taped foot. It goes out and boom, touches down, match over. Any part of the body inside the doyo touches down besides the sole of your feet, match over. Any part of your body outside the ring, match over. This, match over. Yarborough moves on. Here's Poli Liua, one of the top powerlifters from Hawaii, pumping up, getting ready for his upcoming match. And his opponent, maybe the toughest man the Japanese have brought over, Takahisa Osanai. Second place last year in the All Japan Sumo Tournament. And Osanai is captain of the Nihon University Sumo Team, probably the top uh, collegiate sumo team in all of Japan. So this will be power versus technique. Now. As Poli goes down into his squat and Osanai follows, we realize, look at the flexibility of Mr. Osanai compared to Liyua. This is not necessarily a genetic gift. It's something the Japanese work on, and as Wayne Vieira tells us, it does not come easily. In order to be that flexible, you have to endure a lot of pain. Um, they put you in a split position and they force you down, uh, force your head down to touch the, the floor in front of you. And as soon as you, your head touches, your growing muscles tear. And it takes a month to two months to heal. Uh, there's a lot of bruises in your growing area, and uh, it's very painful. Here's where you can see flexibility important. Leo squats about 725 pounds, yet he's not able to get as low as Osanai. So I think we're going to see Osanai come really low across. And that's just what happened. Osa and I stayed lower than Liu. I got the grip on the Muashi and straight Oshidashi right over the edge. Of course, the training table, one of the most important elements of any athlete's life. And now we're here at the pre-meet meal here in the Sumo Championship, and we're going to bother Roger Heffernan and his two sons and the whole Hawaiian table. Is there, is there a philosophy behind what you guys eat, or is just uh, see it, eat it? No, usually in uh, the sumo wrestlers, especially in Hawaii, we need rice. Rice is a very staple food, so that's the base of the thing. If, if we don't have poi, we eat rice. So in California, we have rice, so we eat rice, shrimp, sausage, chicken, bacon, eggs. This is a, this is a meal. <laughs> okay, I, I, that's easier to ask. What is it that you guys don't eat? Well, we'll get back to Roger on that question a little bit later in the program. When we return, the Open Division semifinals, stick with us. Get you cleaner and more refreshed. But I earn it. I need some serious lather. Ugh. Look here. It takes nine bars to get as much cleaner rinsing lather as Zest Body Wash with lather thingy. Get cleaner, more refreshed with Zest Body Wash. Now that's zestfully clean. Thursday night football. Mississippi State Ole Miss. The Bulldogs and Rebels, they call it the Egg Bowl. On Turkey Day, a heap and helping of hatred. Thursday game night at 7.30, Mississippi State versus Ole Miss at 8. Thursday on ESPN. Welcome back to the North American Sumo Wrestling Championships from the Hollywood Park Casino in Englewood, California. The Open Division competition pits athletes of any weight against one another, and we can have some fairly severe weight differences. As an example, Andy Ruggiero, lightweight champion against Poli Liua. Liua comes in about 320, power lifter. 
But Ruggiero, you notice, uses his balance and uses the edge of the ring to stay in bounds. That's why the open weight's the most exciting weight, anybody against anybody. And now, well, here's where the strength comes in with Liua simply picking up his opponent and marching him out of the ring. If you have your opponent over your head and he's no chance of winning, you can step out first and not be the loser. And that's what the referee ruled. You had full control of Ruggiero. And so that takes care of our lightweight champion in the open division. Now we go to Heath Johnson on our right, the middleweight champion, and his opponent, Mr. Mitsuhiko Narita of Japan. The Japanese have been invited to compete in the open division championships. And this should be a good match for Heath because Narita's got a lot of technique, but he's not overpowering, so Heath might have a good chance here to beat Japan. Touchy eye, the touch of the hands. Narita's staying low, getting a grip. Well, look at that. The, the power, as Manny said, is definitely in the fight of the man, not the size of the man. Narita just straight driving him backwards out of the ring. And that is where the power of the legs and all that training six days a week, five hours a day of the Japanese comes into play as we look at our open division semi-finalists. Number one, Yarborough at 700 pounds. The big man there. And, of course, Vieira, 330 pounds going against Osanai. Yeah, Yarborough should have a great match here. His opponent uh, has trained with many times Montgomery, an ex-pro uh, football player for a couple of years. Has a big hit, really comes across fast, so Yarbrough doesn't like the small guys. But a big hit against a 700-pound weight, is that effective? Well, it's a big, fast hit. So what, what he's going to try and do is get in there, Montgomery, as fast as he can and, and sting Yarbrough before Yarbrough gets moving. Once Manny gets up and stabilized, then it's pretty hard to beat. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Well, Yarbrough stood straight up at the beginning of that bout and Montgomery sort of pushed forward and then Manny just pushed him down. Yeah, with Manny's bulk, he's able to absorb that attack. He just waited and when he pushed really hard, Manny just stepped back and Montgomery hit the ground. Called Hitaki Komi a slap down from the front. Well, Manny got through that round with a fair amount of ease. But now Mr. Osana, again second at the All-Japanese Tournament last year, making him quite a power in this sport. You said Johnny may be headed into the professional ranks later. Yeah, there's a talk of him definitely going professional ranks, and he's going against a former professional wrestler in Wayne Vieira from the United States out of Hawaii. This should be a, a good match. Hopefully if Wayne gets a good start, uh, he's got a good chance of beating Osanai. Well, I'd say Osanai is the favorite. Both hands touch. The match begins Vieira with a big hit. Osanai backs away and gets a grip now on the Mawashu, drives to the edge, and with that leg power, squatting and lifting, out he goes. Well, Olsen, you could see him just deliver his hips underneath, getting all his power beneath him and lifting his man toward the edge, and there's nothing that Vieira could do. Absolutely. So now that puts Olsen versus Yarbrough in the finals of the uh, open weight division. Giving up 410 pounds. Could he use the same technique against a man of Yarbrough's size? Definitely. If Olsen which he's famous for, is able to stay low and get under Manny, Manny's in trouble. Manny does not like to fight the smaller guys. Um, they're like a mosquito and an elephant. John, they're all smaller guys against Manny. <laughs> That's totally true. Okay, let's see if Manny can keep him away from the belt. If Manny can stay low, this will be a good match. Manny needs to power out himself and not just be he's submissive. Got, he's got to power forward and stay low. That's the two critical things he has to do here. We'll see. If, no, well, uh, uh -huh. one step forward, but Osanai's got him underneath with the Mawashi and just tips him right over off the ring. Manny tried for a throw at the very edge there, but Osanai already had that momentum moving. And again, that's what we said. Osanai just stayed much lower than Manny. He was able to get underneath and with that uh, constant training of the legs, Osanai is the victor. I think the Japanese coming from the traditional country don't like to lose in America. I got under me, and uh, the thing about this sport, when you can get under anybody, you can move anybody. It's uh, it's a leverage thing, and it's a technique thing. And uh, I tried to prevent it. I couldn't prevent it. Osana is a very skilled fighter. John, we witnessed the continued growth of sumo in the U.S. out there today. Yes, and it's also growing worldwide. Uh, we went from 25 countries six years ago. This coming world championship, we'll have 71 countries participating. But we also saw why, with its thousands of years of tradition, Japan continues to be the best of the best. For John Jacks, I'm Tony Revis. So long from Hollywood Park Casino. And now we're ready for three rounds of super middle.